Welcome. What we have here is a Sun Vault energy storage system. This was built to be hanging on a wall. A lot of times it was out in California in order to offset electricity usage during high peak times, uh, but also be able to run a house off grid if the power goes out, because you know that when it gets windy, we got to turn off the power, make sure we don't start fires. Uh, anyway, we have a bunch of these that we're setting up and I want to show what we had to go through to get a Sun Vault working off grid instead of being an on grid inverter. Now, if you look at this, obviously this is a Schneider inverter with a Schneider gateway um, and batteries. Like there's nothing really special about that. Really the only secret sauce here is the batteries and kind of what's happening inside of this Sun Power Multi IO. But let me step you through the actual individual steps, especially if you bought one of these from us and you want to just set this up as a single vault that's running off grid. First thing you're gonna do if you're running it off grid is you're gonna want to move the wires that are running from the switch over here into AC1 and put them into the load. Um, you'll, you'll end up needing to add a neutral wire over to your breaker panel, but this switch is what's gonna feed your breaker panel. That's gonna provide your loads off of this vault. This is where we've got our three sets of connections for AC power. Right here on the left is the load, and we got AC1 and AC2. AC2 is typically used for the generator. Now, when we first got this, this switch over here, and you can actually see it here on the outside of the cabinet, this on-off switch actually runs to the AC1 port of the inverter, because that's, what, that's the port they were using for power when this was connected as a sun power system going over to a hub plus. But we're gonna move those wires, you can see we already did over here into the load output because we're running off grid and we're not gonna do that. Now we have our, we do have our AC1 populated because that's our grid input. The other thing you're gonna notice is that this load output already had some wires on it and we're gonna to get to those later, but what we did is we just ran those to a 15 amp breaker uh, instead of trying to double lug the connections because that's always, that's always hairy and you can end up with a hot connection have damage. So that's the AC part there. So after you got the AC stuff figured out, the next thing is gonna be batteries. In this cabinet, you can fit three batteries. So battery one sits right here at the back, battery two, and then battery three sits right on top. Let me show you on one of these batteries that's outside the cabinet where we can more easily see what's going on. But there is an orange cord coming down from that Sun Power Multi IO, and that's gonna go right into the PCS port of your first battery, battery number one. And then you've got the other two ports here are link in and link out. Link in is gonna get this terminator plug. You get one of these terminator plugs for every battery. There will be one inside the packaging. Uh, link out gets a standard ethernet cord from link out to link in of the next battery. These are included with the vault. So you shouldn't have to worry about that. But if for some reason something is damaged or missing, it's just a standard ethernet cord. So again, battery one, PCS gets the orange cord, link in gets a terminator, link out gets a cord over to the next battery. Then let's walk back over to the vault here. So link out to link in. You've also got your amphenol connectors, which of course are all important for actually getting the 48 volt power from the battery up to the inverter. So you can plug each of these into your batteries as you're putting them into the cabinet. Um, and then in your last battery, of course, it's gonna have something going into the link in port from your second battery. The link out port will have another terminator plug. So you will end up with one spare terminator if you have three batteries, because you only need two for a single system. So all the batteries are there. Um, this here is a cord that runs from your J5 here on the multi IO to the BTS port in the bottom of the inverter. Remove this cord, throw it out, put it in your scrap pile. You don't need that. It only causes problems. So this multi IO does two things. One thing it does is it sends CAN bus keep alive messages across this orange cord down to battery number one every second to make sure that that battery stays online, keeping it awake. Um, so that is absolutely required. If the battery doesn't see that after 10 minutes, it's gonna shut down. The other thing it does is it controls the cooling fan here in the case. So we haven't measured exactly when it happens, but I think it's around 50 Celsius inside the cabinet. Um, the AC, which earlier we talked about running this wire from the load output over to a breaker in our breaker panel. So the AC input comes in here on J11. There's a relay inside this multi IO that will turn on fan one anytime it gets hot enough in the case. 
So that's to cool the case. Brings in air here through a filtered inlet over here, which you will need to check occasionally. Make sure that that's not getting clogged in there. Um, and that will cool the cabinet in general, which is really mostly the inverter, unless you add something else like our charge controller in here in addition to the inverter. Your gateway will not include Wi-Fi antennas. Um, if you need those, re request them. I've, I've, I might have some here that I could include if you're buying them from me, but they're standard, um, they're standard Wi-Fi antennas. There's RPA, female, I think is what it is. Um, nothing special there. This gateway does have ethernet or Wi-Fi for getting onto the network. But once you've got all that, that's all of your hardware. Obviously your load outputs, you're gonna have to wire up to your breaker panel. This doesn't have a solar charge controller built in. So what we did is we put an EG4 um, solar charge controller down here. We've also put the, the Victron 25100 in here, which I actually like a little bit better, but this one happens to still be in here. The next part that you're gonna have to do though is to reset this to factory defaults because this has a password in there that SunPower put in it and the inverter is gonna be in standby. It's set up as an energy storage system to be used with the SunPower Hub Plus. We probably don't wanna, we don't wanna do that for this off-grid installation. So what, with this gateway, what you're gonna to wanna to do is push it sideways, other sideways, and I just hit a button. I didn't wanna do that. And it pops right off. So you can see here, this is a spring-loaded clip. So that pops right off. Once you have that popped off, you can see that we have an SSID, we have the Wi-Fi password, and then we have the IP address for accessing this device, whether that be over Ethernet or over Wi-Fi. So if you don't wanna deal with the Wi-Fi, just plug in your Ethernet. That's what we've got plugged in here with our black cord, and it'll get an IP off of your router, and you can log into it that way. Um, but before that works, what you're gonna to have to do is hold this power button down, and you'll hear it beep, and then beep, beep, when, it's, when it goes to a beep, 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 that's four quick beeps in a row, you let go. That's gonna cause it to factory reset. So that'll get rid of all the settings, it'll get rid of all the passwords, set it all back to factory. Once that's done, you can connect to it over Wi-Fi, over Ethernet, and you'll be able to get in with the default password, which is admin with a capital A, one, two, three. So username, admin, password is admin with a capital A, one, two, three. That gets you into the gateway. Under the devices page, you're gonna see the XW Pro inverter, and you're also gonna see the battery. And it's the battery bank in this case, because even if you have three batteries down here, you're gonna see one battery inside the Insight Facility Devices page. So let's click on the inverter. You're gonna go into controls, and you're gonna see an option for reset. If you do the drop down for that option, it's gonna give you an option to reset to factory defaults. And this might take a couple minutes, but do that, hit apply. That's gonna reset the inverter to factory defaults. At this point, this is now a Schneider system. We've got an inverter and a gateway that are Schneider. The only things that this thing is doing is controlling the fan and, and passing through the CAN bus data and sending the keep alives. All stuff that we could rep reproduce later on if for some reason these start failing, but I haven't seen these as being a common failure item. It's a pretty simple device. And by the way, this has the temperature sensor built into it for controlling the fan. It's not looking at CAN bus data or whatnot. So it's nothing special to be able to do that. Um, the inverter, probably by now has been reset to factory. If you go back into the configuration of the inverter, you go into the battery settings. There's gonna be three settings. The very first three settings, you're gonna set it to lithium ion, you're gonna set it to external BMS, and you're gonna set it to state of charge control enabled. Now, anytime you're changing a setting inside of the inverter and there's a voltage and a state of charge, the state of charge is what the inverter is gonna be looking at for making decisions, not the voltage anymore. Um, you might find that some settings work better if you're all on voltage control instead of state of charge control. I've been able to get everything working on state of charge control to date, even if I do have to have an external device controlling things. But that gets you to where now everything is being controlled based on state of charge. Now, this inverter does not have solar input. This is a hybrid inverter. It can interact with the grid. You can export to the grid with this if you want. Um, but it does not have solar charger. You can see that we added a solar charger down here. And all we did is we ran our heavy ca cables up into the bottom of the inverter here where it's got its miniature bus bars. Um, and it's just a standard 48 volt solar charge controller is all we did to run our power into this vault. 
Now we could charge from the grid as well, but of course we wanted to charge with solar. So that makes this here, makes this into a complete system. So you've got three batteries equaling 19 and a half kilowatt hours. You know, with this, you've got a 100 amp solar charge controller, you've got a 6.8 kilowatt low frequency hybrid inverter with the gateway closed loop BMS communication, and you can close the door and be outside. So that is the SunPower SunVault off-grid. All right, coming at you post-recording as we're putting all this video together, I wouldn't recommend using the EG4 solar charge controller. We've been using a Victron model that's been working great. The EG4 has been having some errors that we're still working through with EG4. Um, could be something on our end, could be something on their end, but after a few months, we still haven't figured it out, so I'm not sure. Just wanted to say that since we show that in the vault, might not be a good option unless you're confident that it's going to work for you.